I don't know what to do. These coasters, they smell. They literally stink. I can't sell these like this, let alone give them away. Today I'm finding that I need something other than an art supply in order to complete these coasters. These coasters are gonna be amazing, but the problem is they smell. They literally stink. Several months back, I actually came to Lowe's to get some spar varnish because when I researched how to actually make coasters, because I wanted to seal them, I had an instinct that gel medium and Mod Podge wasn't gonna work, and I was right, because when I put something really wet on top of it, it left white marks. And that's not gonna work, because this is art. It's one of a kind art that can't be duplicated. So if it gets ruined, what's the point? When I saw to use spar varnish, that I, I did, and I put it on. But the problem, is they really smell so bad that my entire office, my entire art studio, the entire week, I had a migraine and that's not good. And they still smelled two months later. That's not really a good solution. So I had a work retreat a couple weeks ago and my boss, Tim, he loves, he's a woodworker. He's made a lot of furniture. And I thought, well, who better to maybe help me figure out this problem? So what he decided to do was to video conference a good friend, Brad Rodriguez, from the YouTube channel Fix This Build That. So one of the things he suggested that I try was a water-based polyurethane. So I've got to go back to Lowe's and try that out. All right, so Lowe's it is today. Just me and every other guy in the world. So I asked a couple people about a couple differences here because one of the things that I noticed is this is called polyacrylic and this is called polyurethane. And the one thing Brad had told me to get was polyurethane, but water-based was very specific about that. So in just asking a couple people just to make sure that I got the right answer, um, I was told that that's the difference is if it's water-based, then it's polyacrylic. And if it's oil-based, then it's polyurethane. So you wanna make sure to get the water-based. So mission accomplished, and probably one of the toughest things for me is not to just go wandering down the aisles and pick up things that are going to make texture and marks and stuff, because yeah, I can get out of control in a store like this. And you found everything okay today? I did, yeah. Amazing. Thanks, Sylvia. Bye. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to try this out now. Let me take this now that I'm away from people I can take my mask off but uh yeah so that was very successful I'm excited to see how this works and hopefully it won't stink because if it stinks then I just wasted 40 bucks to be able to actually create the coasters one of the things that you have to do is you've got to first uh, find a print that you like and this is one of those things where you don't actually need to have a print that's perfect but sometimes you have just little corners on prints that are great now in this particular case i'm going to create four coasters from just one piece so i have to kind of map out which parts of the print i'm using you can use whatever it is, whether it's tissue paper, deli paper, or actual paper, like I used on this one. You need to first put down some gel medium. So I'm just putting some down liberally onto the actual coaster. It would be best if you could actually seal your coaster first, both sides with the poly. That way, nothing's gonna get through that coaster when you put the actual cork on. First, I'm gonna lay down some matte gel medium. And then after that, I'm gonna put down my actual artwork. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of sandpaper. And the cool part about this is you actually have to perfectly line up your pieces with the edge. It's okay if it's imperfect because the sandpaper is gonna get it completely flush with the edge. The reason that's important is you don't wanna have any stragglers that can pull up the art. So by utilizing something that's like fine sandpaper, it doesn't have to be like the finest kind, Especially if you're using deli paper, that comes off really simple, but even a regular cardstock, you can just really get it nice and flush. I'm going to add another layer of the gel medium. Now, at this point, you could probably do any sort of little distressing or embellishment that you want. You can do it before if you want as well. Just recognize that the gel medium, if anything is water reactive, it's a great way not just to seal it, but stuff might kind of shift and move at that time. 
So you just have to kind of be aware of what's going on. On a couple of these coasters, I had some weird little spots, so I embossed a couple spots to add something different and unique. Once you have that sealed and dried, then you can go ahead and add your final coat. Now that we know that the oil-based polyurethane isn't gonna work because it's gonna stink, we're gonna use the water-based, and that's kind of cool. It's a little thinner than the oil-based, so I'm gonna actually apply two coats for sure. You can use anything that you have, whether that be a brush, maybe it's a, you know, a sponge applicator. It can also be a credit card. The thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you are fully coating it and you get a good layer of protection. If you're not going to be protecting this, then what's the point? I'm going to put that on top of another container and that's where utilizing some of those hundreds of embossing containers that I have can come in very handy. We're going to let that fully dry and then apply a second coat. Once we've got everything completely dry, now it's time to add the cork bottoms. You're gonna peel the sticker off and you're gonna add your cork to your actual backing. It's important that you've actually sealed the backside of it. So just in case water gets in there, you wanna then just take a little bit of sandpaper and just very easily match the edges to the edges of the coaster. No need to get out an X-Acto blade or scissors. Sandpaper will do this trick just fine. Now that I'm back from Lowe's and I have my new water-based polyurethane, I've got to try to actually remove the stink from the ones that I've already done. This, these are too cool to be able to have them smell like this. The only thing that I can think to possibly use on this would be something that's gonna actually draw out that smell. What if we try baking soda? It's worth a shot, right? That wasn't as bad this time. The water-based poly was definitely, it didn't stink. So that was a huge difference. The oil-based, the minute I cracked it open, it, those fumes came back even with cracking a window. Uh, but now that it's closed, it's not as bad as it was before. I definitely think that having them all dry in the same room that I'm like spending so much time in, that was probably not a wise plan. So the coaster that I had done a couple months ago, that one, that one doesn't really smell. And the baking soda 100% pulled whatever there still was on here out. It's gone, but it's been a couple months. Now the one that I just freshly did the other day, yeah, this one still smells. I would probably have to let this sit for a couple months or let it sit in the baking soda even longer. Being able to create artwork that's unique and one of a kind with stuff that you don't have to necessarily buy in a store is special. To see how I made those leaf coasters, click this video right here. I show you not just how to take stuff that's from outside, but also from your pantry as well as your garage. I'll see you right there.